the story The Midnight Visitor written by Robert Arthur. The story revolves around three characters. Two rival spies named Ossibel and Max and mystery writer Fowler. Ossibel is a chubby, lethargic, messy and clumsy man. While Max is slim and sturdy. The story is a short but intriguing insight into the life of a spy which may not be as glamorous as in the movies but still full of danger and suspense. Ossibel meets Fowler, a writer fascinated by spies and secrets. I'm expecting an important and sensitive document tonight. So Fowler, let's go to my hotel. Right, sir. Fowler agrees to do the same, so he follows Ossibel to his hotel room. Suddenly, Ossibel gets a phone call regarding someone who had entered his hotel room. Hello, sir. It seems someone has entered your room. Shall we inform the police? No, please don't. I'll do something myself. Alarmed but not overly worried, Ossibel beckons Fowler to follow him to his room. Disappointed at Ossibel's appearance and mannerisms, Fowler agrees to do the same. The room was on the sixth floor. As they enter the room, they are startled by a pistol trotting individual staring at them. It is Max, the rival spy of Ossibel. He asks them to enter and lock the room. You gave me quite a start. I thought you were in Berlin. What are you doing here in my room? The report, the report that has been brought to you tonight concerning some missiles. I thought I would take it from you. It will be safer in my hands than in yours. Ossibel moved to an armchair and sat down heavily. I'm going to raise the devil with the management this time and you can bet on it. Dejected with the management of the hotel, Ossibel wishes to confront them. He complains about the balcony window that he thought Max had used to break into his room. This is the second time in a month that somebody has got into my room through that nuisance of a balcony. Balcony? No, a pass key. I did not know about the balcony. It might have saved me some trouble had I known. It's not my balcony. It belongs to the next apartment. You see, this room used to be part of a large unit and the next room through that door there used to be the living room. It had the balcony which extends under my window now. You can get onto it from the empty room two doors down and somebody did it last month. The management promised to block it off but they haven't. Fowler was listening to the conversation intently. Max glanced at Fowler who was standing stiffly not far from Ossibel and waved the gun with a commanding gesture. Please sit down. We have a wait of half an hour I think. 31 minutes. The appointment was for 12.30. I wish I knew how you learned about the report. Suddenly there is a loud clamor at the door. Ossibel suggests that it must be the police that he had arranged to make sure the documents were safe. That will be the police. I thought that such an important paper should have a little extra protection. I told them to check on me to make sure everything was alright. Max was nervous. The knocking was repeated. What will you do now, Max? If I do not answer the door, they will enter anyway. The door is unlocked and they will not hesitate to shoot. Send them away. I will wait on the balcony. Send them away or I'll shoot and take my chances. The knocking at the door became louder and a voice was raised 
Mr. Rossible? Mr. Rossible? The doorknob turned. Swiftly, Max pushed with his left hand to free himself from the sill and dropped to the balcony. And then, as he dropped, he screamed once shrilly. Ah! The door opened, and Fowler sees a waiter holding Ossible's drinks, rather any policeman. Here is the drink you ordered for when you returned. White-faced, Fowler stared at him. But the police? Well, there was no police. Only Henry, whom I was expecting. But what about the man out on the balcony? No, he won't return. You see, my young friend, there is no balcony. So friends, the story highlights the theme that wisdom is more powerful than any other weapon. Ossible's intelligence is highlighted in the story. It is also based on the theme that one should not judge a person by merely his appearance. Ossible is fat and lazy, but he is the most intelligent of all in the story. So we can say that Ossible outwits or deceives Max by making up convincing stories. So friends, a calm mind can help us to tackle extreme stress. If Ossible had panicked and done something fishy, then Max probably would have killed him. But Ossible kept his cool. Apart from this story, there can be some real life examples also. We are always told to focus when we are appearing for exams or not to panic in a difficult situation because such things hamper our thinking ability. We are not able to take proper decision at this time. When we are in problems or in a situation which looks dangerous, we often lose hopes and don't even try to recover from the situation. Our mind does not function properly at the very moment. But to find solutions to overcome with that, we have to calm our nerves and cool our mind. If we keep our mind cool and focus, then only we can find ways to get out of crunch situations. <laughs>